हेलो एवरीवन पावर शेयरिंग इज अवर टॉपिक द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ योर डेमोक्रेटिक पॉलिटिक्स इन द फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी हैड डिस्कस द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द एथनिक कॉम्पोजिशंस वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द एथनिक ग्रुप्स वी ऑल्सो डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द जोग्राफिकल सिचुएशन ऑफ बेल्जियम एंड श्रीलंका वी ऑल्सो डिस्कस दैट बोथ द कंट्रीज आर डेमोक्रेटिक and now we are going to discuss that uh, because of the different ethnic uh, groups among the ethnic groups also in fact we are taking the linguistic group in belgium and we are taking linguistic group in sri lanka not only the linguistic group in sri lanka but also religion we talked about the ethnic composition in belgium that how dutch speaking french speaking german speaking they are residing in that country and what could be the possibilities of all these linguistic groups because french although they were 40% of the total population of the country relatively rich and powerful and dutch could resent then we discussed about sri lanka tend to be a democratic country sinhalas are here forming 74% of the total population even bigger majority than dutch as compared to belgium then there are 18% tamils 13% sri lankan tamils and 5% indian tamils both hindus and muslims and we discussed that there are 7% christians scattered everywhere sri lanka an island country a few kilometers uh, from uh, tamil nadu in india and uh, in economics we have read that it has shown excellent record in economic uh, development uh, social development an excellent excellent record shown by it and now we will see that what happened in the country when it became independent in 1948 adopted a democratic system of government in 1956 after the election obviously who came to the power sinhalas came to the power because we know that they are 74% of the total population so the sinhala government was formed and in 1956 the only sinhala act was passed we are discussing about majoritarianism in sri lanka students just focus upon the ncert page numbers 2 3 4 about which we are discussing Uh, so uh, majoritarianism in sri lanka the term majoritarianism itself refers to a policy or a tendency of the majority community to rule over the minority in whichever way it wants so majoritarianism uh, it was established in uh, sri lanka and particularly when the only sinhala act passed in 1956 of three marks topic in your board examination in this only sinhala act it was declared that sinhala will be the official language of the country only sinhala will be the official language of the country here you can see that uh, tamils were disregarded and their interests were not at all seen the second part of the act was that only the sinhala applicants will be given preference in university positions and in the government jobs again disregarding the tamils and the third one uh, that uh, go the government the government of sri lanka will promote buddhism buddhism will be fostered and promoted by the government so all these measures coming one after one before the people it made the tamils the tamil group of the country feel alienated they felt humiliated disappointed and disregarded however they demanded the government that sinhala should also be made an official language of the country and they also demanded provincial autonomy in your ncert page number 3 you can see the map uh, of sri lanka in which you can see the orange you can see the uh, brown color uh, in which they uh, they have been divided particularly so the tamils when they saw that their rights are denied in their own country they are made to feel alienated so they ask the government to give them provincial autonomy and provincial autonomy means in the provinces where they are in majority they should be given autonomy means there should be their government one by one government rejected and denied their rights denied their demands their demands were not accepted so the enmity 
uh, the relations between the two that is the sinhalas and the tamils they were strained over time means they became full of strain they were strained over time correct and so finally there were organizations there were parties they were made by the tamils uh, to force the government of the sinhala government to take notice to their demands to take notice to their interests a number of political organizations came up a number of parties came up but with no effect finally the tamils they demanded tamil elam that is a separate nation for the tamils an elam one mark question elam is a state so a separate elam a separate state for the tamils now how could sinhalas accept this demand when they are not accepting the demand of uh, recognizing the uh, other language like tamil recognizing other than sinhala recognizing the tamil they did not accept then provincial autonomy they did not accept so how can we how can we accept how can we expect that the government will accept the demand of elam a separate nation a separate state so when their demands were not noticed when their demands were not accepted there was a civil war the enmity uh, the enmity between the two between the sinhalas and the tamils the hostility between the two cultural groups as well as uh, the feeling of alienation the feeling that they were alienated in their own country the tamils it led to a finally it resulted in a civil war again a three marks topic for you in boards a civil war broke out in the country now the question arises what is a civil war a civil war is a home war means in which the people of the same country uh, they are involved and no other outer country no other country is involved it is called a civil war so a civil war broke out in the country and it brought lots of massacre killings of the people people from both the sides were killed civilians were killed many people who disliked all these wars and battles they left the country and became refugees many people even left their businesses they left their uh, profe- uh, their whatever profession they were doing they left it and they went to the other countries as refugees and there was finally there was lots of killing lots of massacre in the country lots of disturbance in the country however this civil war brought a total setback to the economic development of the country which was shown by sri lanka in the first chapter of economics we have read that sri lanka has shown a very good result in economic development uh, in the chapter of development we have read about it so it all came down it got a setback and uh, after that you know today um, we call them as ltt liberation of tamil tigers elam it was an insurgent group who are insurgents you have read about the term terrorism terrorist so insurgency insurgents are those people who uh, take up terrorizing all terrorist activities in their own region not in the region of the other countries not in the other countries but locally in their own region in their own country so they are called insurgents your one mark question so uh, this group became insurgent later on and uh, they inhabited many areas in sri lanka and this shows that how majoritarianism can be so bad for a country if the majority community imposes its will forcibly on the minority it will bring ruin to the country r u i n ruin to the country as we have seen that uh, uh, sri lanka was totally ruined after the civil war so this was about that power sharing was not done the sinhala government refused to share power with the tamils about christians we have read that they were both the sides sometime here and with the sinhalas sometime with the tamils so we are not talking about them they have not much reference in the chapter so we are focusing upon the two main communities sinhalas and the tamils so the development of the country was brought down and uh, this uh, tells us that how if power sharing is not done how it brings collapse how it brings destruction to a country destruction to the people destruction to the communities etc correct so this was about majoritarianism now we quickly switch over to accommodation in belgium as far as belgium is concerned the belgian leaders were aware that if power is not shared 
it would lead to destruction or it would lead to as uh, such certain people feel that they are alienated in their own country so do you know that the belgian leaders they took a very cautious approach and up to 1993 they amended their constitution four times four times they sat together there were meetings constitution was amended so that accommodation policies accommodative policies could be adopted because they came to know they knew through the examples of the other countries just now we have read the example of sri lanka that if power sharing is not done it would cause destruction so they met four times they didn't bother about the time about the money that was spent on all these meetings but finally in 1993 they adjusted they accommodated all the different communities and it is a new model for the rest of europe the accommodative policies the accommodation that the belgian leaders adopted it became a model for the rest of europe for the rest for the other countries of europe a model an example now we will discuss we will focus upon four points of accommodation now we all know that belgium is divided it has two regions flemish and wallonia and we also know that uh, uh, dutch and french they are inhabiting it and brussels have a separate situation the community which is forming a minority in the country is an absolute majority in brussels the capital of belgium and vice versa the community dutch which is forming a majority in the country is an acute minority in brussels that is 20% so what they did in the central government equal seats were assigned to dutch and french speaking communities so that no committee can take unilateral decision there would be bilateral decision unilateral means alone bilateral means combinedly joint uh, the dutch and french ministers they would take decision bilaterally not unilaterally so in the central government dutch accommodated the french then in the two regions of flemish and wallonia certain powers of the central government were given to them uh, to the state government the two states of flemish and wallonia and uh, there also they were not subordinate to the central government but they will derive their power from the constitution as we uh, do it federalism in federal system the third one came in brussels the situation was very uh, critical very uh, typical or very different so as dutch accommodated french in the center in brussels again equal ministries were given to dutch and french uh, uh, people as dutch had accommodated french in the center here french accommodated dutch in brussels in the capital now fourth point one more experiment community government in nowhere in the world there is community government except belgium it has a community government so the community government was also formed so as to make the people feel that they are people of the same country and uh, they feel united so uh, they were uh, this uh, under the community government dutch speaking french speaking uh, german speaking 1% wherever they are living they can form their community government and the community government will have the right over protecting their culture protecting their uh, economic rights etc so all these things will be looked after by the community government it's a very innovative and an exceptional experiment in belgium so these four accommodation accommodation uh, steps or accommodative factors they made belgium a very peaceful country uh, today belgians are not dutch speaking french speaking german speaking today they all are belgians and this accommodative policy of this or this accommodation it held the country it held belgium to stay peaceful and when the european economic union was formed when many european countries came together and formed the european union european economy eeu european economic union they chose brussels as their headquarter so that is all for today uh, go through pages ncert 2 3 and 4 pages tomorrow we will discuss further uh, about accommodation about why power sharing is desirable till then it's a very good bye from me